She loved it. I never heard it. <clears throat> Word? Yeah, let me go check it out. You ain't gonna eat shit. You gonna just look at it. You gonna so go check it out. So do you eat pretty healthy as well? What? You hey. like are very strict on your diet. No goddamn salt. No, no. <laughs> goddamn pepper on my shit. <laughs> nah, I eat, I eat regular. Okay. If regular? I to, if I have to eat, get ready for something, then I just... Yeah. What do you mean? I'm not gonna let you sit here and tell my girl you eat fucking regular. I do. Who are you talking? <laughs> regular what is for regular, who? What the yeah. fuck? Yeah. yeah. What do you, what what you, you eat okay, fast now, food I, once in a while? Like, oh, no, like, I'm it, hungover. Probably once a week. You eat fast once food a once a week? week? Let's unpack this. See? Yeah. How, I see, like how this. does this happen? People get their fitness shit overrated. Like, okay, when you say fast food, though, what do you consider fast McDonald's, food? McDonald's, Nick. Okay, do you eat McDonald's once yes. a week? Yes. All right. Do I'm you a, eat a, the healthy thing at McDonald's? No, I eat, Mc, I eat number one. I hope not. Big Mac. Like, I'm a, My nigga, that's what I eat too. <laughs> Big Mac meal if I'm going to get it. I'm like, I'm not one of those... Um, Fitnessy people that just I gotta eat celery and carrots and water. Yeah. No, I think they lying anyway. You don't think they're really eating that? No. Do you, I thought abs were made in the kitchen? It is, but you don't have to eat bad every day. But you, you deserve to have something to you know treat yourself. Have you ever? If I'm trying, if I like gotta lose like ten pounds, what's my best way to do that? Is it? It's not. It's not McDonald's. It's is not it, fast food. Is it? Have you ever done intermittent fasting? Yeah, I did that. Before. Is that? I'm I'm on day one of intermittent fasting. It's not bad, you know, but you have to make sure you get enough food in that time window so your body can actually refuel, keep your metabolism going, do what you have to do. But so I just got to be like eating, shoveling food in my no, mouth no, 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 during no, no, those no. times? No, nah. no, During your eight-hour window, what the? <laughs> you can eat three or four meals every two hours. Oh, it's hours. an eight-hour window? I thought it was a six-hour window. It depends on which one you're doing. If you're doing 16 to 8. Yeah, different. I think that's what I was doing. Yeah. I, I thought it was, I, did, I only ate from 12 to 6 today. And that's I was going to go all the way till tomorrow. That's not bad. That's too early for me. I'm scared. I'm already hungry. <laughs> I know you are. It's, it's up, yeah, it's, 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 you got to get used to it. What? You got to get used to it. You got to make sure that you, know, you, you prepare yourself. Anytime you do a diet, a diet yeah. never works the first day. Yeah. It takes like a week. Even with me, I've been dieting for years. It's like it takes me a week to get, to get like, okay, I'm, now I'm on it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mistakes. shouldn't feel too bad if I'm like nah. drinking juice tomorrow morning. No, maybe. Not, no it's it's not gonna kill you, bro. Trust me. But like, that's what I was wondering. I was wondering, like, mm. is it an all or nothing thing? Like, if I miss or like if I if I fuck up by a couple hours or if I have a juice late at night one night, is that like oh you're fu-? like ketosis gets like fucked up? Ket- if you no, nah, that's do different. Like you that. can throw your body off with that, right? That's so like hardcore. Like intermittent fasting is basically shutting your body down. Is letting your body it's shutting down your, your your digestive system. You're not you're not actually um, you're not di- you're not eating food, so your body doesn't have to process those things. And it's giving your body a break. And it gives it a break, and then you actually get the food that you need when it's time to. You just build it out. You start. You take your time doing it. You know mm-hmm. everything in moderation. Everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, I'll and try. don't give up we'll if you make a I mistake. Do. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, I'm like, here's... well, does one mistake really fucking matter? You've not done this your whole life. I know, I know, <laughs> but I also don't want to, you know, when you walk into something and you're like, and I'm going to make mistakes, then like you forgive yourself or if you're like, <laughs> you, you I really want to get this done, then you get yeah. it done. Yeah. Well, this will be my before picture. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess I got to look kind of like, like I got to kind of look schlumpy in my before I got to kind of look so much. <laughs> There, now that's my report. So much news. I thought we just haven't been here. Well, we, we took last week off. It was a little summer break. It was yeah. Sterling's birthday yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Happy you know, birthday. Bro. Thanks, bro. Run up, man. Yeah. You know, it was cool and shit. You look good. Didn't do much. That's right. Just hung out, watched the game. It was great. You went to a game too, right? I went to a game. I went to a Dodgers game, yeah. That was cool. Uh, I hadn't been to a Dodgers game in a while. I've never been to a Dodgers game where they didn't play the Cubs. So that was interesting for me because I wasn't really there rooting for anybody like that. Mm. I was more there because Zane is an L.A. kid. So I'm like, you should know about the Dodgers fam. I'm not a Dodgers fan, mm. but you should be. So it was cool. He didn't give a shit. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> give one <laughs> shit. We got there. He didn't give a fuck at all. He was like, it was hot as fuck. Uh, we got to stay outside the whole time. I was like, I ain't know it's going to be as hot either, actually. No, that was me. This he This was had a fun. bad set to go. Huh? He was like, oh, this is too much. Well, yeah, he was just like, let's go back down to that place that had air conditioning and food. Why would we be outside <laughs> if we could be inside? The kid gets a front row ticket to a baseball game, and he's like, 
Can we get one of those? He was like, Mom, next time, do you think we could get one of those seats higher up? Because <laughs> the seats higher up has shade. Right. And no, he realize. said because he could see better higher. If it was oh, higher oh, up, yeah, he that's, could see. Oh, it's hard yeah. to see behind him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wasn't even thinking that. I was like, Zane, we going to go and ball the fuck out. Zane, like, I can't see shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, shit. Zane, it's my birthday. Sometimes money don't make sense, Zane. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes money don't make sense. <laughs> We're sweating and everyone in the higher seats looks so cool and relaxed. Oh, shit, my face and shit with water. We looking at everybody else just having a great time in the beach ball each other. Like the this. beach ball gets up like, I fuck. <laughs> Away with the ball. Like security pops the beach ball. Bro. <laughs> it's hot, bitch. <laughs> oh, shit. And it was like, it was. It said it was gonna be seventy four degrees. Like, you know what's crazy about the weather? I was like, my mom about this shit. The weather don't never gotta apologize to you. The weather mm. don't ever have to apologize to you. It could be like, yeah, it's gonna be sixty tomorrow, and it could be ninety. And ain't shit you can do. You can't complain to nobody. <laughs> what, what you gonna do? You gonna do? And legitimately, I was like, oh, it says seventy three, mm-hmm. seventy two. Is that sounds like jacket weather? Should we just bring one? What? It was like ninety <laughs> degrees in that bitch. Hot as, Hot as fuck. It Sweat. Was so I was hot. like, damn, fam. I went. I went to a beer festival this weekend, which mm. I've never really been. I've never been deep in the beer culture like I was this weekend. I did not know it was. It felt like a like like Comic Con for beer. Like I didn't know so many people were so excited about beer, um, and they definitely are. They know the ins and the outs. How many beers did you see? Oof, how many beers did I see? Yeah. <laughs> did I drink? No, be- I, no beards. Oh, beards. Oh, I feel beards? like the person that's like beards into, galore. Yeah, beards galore is the person that's like I'm a, a IPA guy and oh, I am yeah. a beer guy. You're like you also have a beard. You just think, it's a look. It's a <laughs> beards, it's a person. Tattoos. There's that that felt very on brand. Kind of like you can tell which guys were just drinking beer like all quarantine long. That was yeah. a look for sure. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, it and now was, they're just con- they really were just fat, but now they're just connoisseurs now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I know beer, you're like, you're also just obese now. <laughs> yeah, but they know what they're, you know, just like listen to some people talk, and it just felt like I was listening to a podcast about beer. Yeah, I just had no idea. Did that, you feel like it was so like silly. beer scientist? Because you probably feel like you talking to a motherfucker, and you'd be like, fam, I don't even know if you got a real degree, but you are breaking down all the science of beer. Oh, they totally are. And yeah. Like, oh, this is barleyed wine. It's not beer. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Nigga, it's beer. I know what that you is. You also the movie Beer Fest? Yeah, I was in uh, Beer that's, Fest. That's what it reminds you of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I don't even know if I saw Beer Fest. You know the you Beer Fest? Yeah, but watch that. It's this when they go to Oktoberfest, yeah, right? October they drink Fest. out of the booth. Yeah, they have yeah, like a competition. Have oh yeah, the DOS booth yeah, yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. But the like the like fandom of beer, I just hadn't um really been in the in the trenches of mm-hmm. until this weekend. And now um I just feel like I'm just like my skin is full of beer. Like I feel like there's <laughs> That's a what made you want to start beer. fast. <laughs> That's why I started. Yeah. So you know what? Let me just. That's why today I was like, water on the show. Mm-hmm. We're gonna, we're gonna start drink over. some water. Yeah. <laughs> Maxed hey, out. Look, next time you go to beer fest, man, you should be a good friend and invite your friends. At least we could have went with you. I've never had a beer, but I would at least went and like. You would have gone. Nah, probably not. Because <laughs> I mean, if I never had a beer, it'd probably be a weird place for me to go. I never you had went to Oktoberfest, right? You've never no. had a beer. Oh, you both I mean... never had a beer. No, I've ha- I've had a beer now at this point in Brussels. I had a chocolate oh, beer. Right. I remember that. And then um, somewhere else, I tried a beer. The reason I don't want beer or like beers because when I was like six at my block club party, uh, I asked them, was it apple juice in this container? Because all I do is pouring it, and they was like, for whatever reason, these adults were like, yeah. And uh, allowed me to pour myself a cup of beer and drink it. And I spit it out. And was like, what the fuck kind of apple <laughs> juice is this? And it scarred me. And um, nice. that, don't maybe, know why they thought that was okay. <laughs> to be like, maybe let this you don't want your kid drink. to be a drinker, make them drink beer. When you see vodka. beer, it makes you... They get arrested. You see people drinking beer, it makes you want to. When I was a mailman, we used to be on the route. So I delivered in the hood. And everybody was drinking beer. Everybody. Wherever you go, had cold beer, cold beer. So I got off the route one day, and I'm a, I'm a mailman, so I'm, all my friends and colleagues are like 56, 60 years old. Yeah, yeah, And I decided <laughs> to go to the store and get a Coors Light. <laughs> Open it up, taste a sip of it. Man, that shit nasty as hell. It's so yeah, because it's such an acquired <laughs> taste. Beer really is not is. good. It's not. I don't get it. 
Yeah, they make it seem like it's so refreshing and like yeah. it's not any of those things. Even no, no, like no. a cold one. Like I was in uh like Mexico or somewhere and everybody was trying to convince me, you're just not drinking beer with the right people. And certain it's beers are so the right good. people? So, so, so good. I think beer. certain beers are and so they were good. like, Okay, I'm gonna show you what you could do with this. And it's like no matter fucking what you do to it, it's disgusting. Yeah. It's I've never had a beer and be like, This is actually good. Have you ever had this, a sour beer? But, I don't know if you like it, but it is a fun. <laughs> it is a fun thing. I had a ginger beer. A ginger beer, and but that's, that's not beer. real beer. That's what I, That's the closest. I that's had. my I favorite. Like is root beer. beer. Root beer is, is my shit. Guys, yeah. this isn't beer. <laughs> hey, to us, it's not beer. beer. These are our favorite beers. It's not beer, but I know that those are beer. We say it's beer. That's what it is. And we vote our favorite beers. We want to be like, okay, ginger's number one. They're like, what? And the root beer is number two. Root is number two. We have thought long and hard about this. Right. <laughs> That's all we got for now. Oh, man. Uh, uh, welcome, to welcome to Wine and Weed. Hey. Uh, today, <laughs> Wine and Water has yeah. been taking a week to recover. <laughs> I'm Chris Reinecker, a.k.a. The Crown of Sewer, a.k.a. The Goop in Your Gap, a.k.a. Uh, why did I... All my a.k.a.s are totally blank. It's all good. Mustache Maven, a.k.a. Uh... Loose of moves, goopy you got. A la la la. Steve uh, of la la la, aka. Chronosaur. The Chronosaur, and yeah. with me as always. Wow, what uh, we got? You know? <laughs> Sterling Steelo Brew, aka that dude, aka S to P to your fast debris. I was a P. Uh, aka <laughs> is that third lady, that's just me. Aka concerned father, aka black mama, aka RP black mama, Stevenson, Stylinson, your stylist, stylist. And last but not least, the Uncle Elroy, and with us on the facts. Talana. And Chris Herm gave me, aka Montana Mommy. So Ooh, thank Montana you. Mommy. Thanks, Another Chris. alliteration. Yeah. I like them. They fuck with it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Alana <laughs> smoke weed today. <laughs> and Alana's never high on the podcast. <laughs> but right now she's a little high. <laughs> and she didn't want to do this show. <laughs> but here we are. And on the show today we have a very special guest. <laughs> My dude, I would say a fitness guru, uh, 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 actor, a lot of things. I would say he yeah, a body transformer. That's one thing he's known as. But yeah, that's my guy for real, Mr. Corey Kaye. Hey. I appreciate hey, you, bro. Here, man. So what else? What else would you say you are? AKA uh, all that good shit. AKA super dad. AKA transformation specialist. AKA action actor. AKA uh, that guy. Yeah, that guy. That I like guy. this. I got a question for you, random. You know, I was gonna ask you just at all. You know that big nigga that be online <laughs> dancing <laughs> and shit and doing all dance yeah, moves yeah, and yeah, in and out. Yeah. How much do you not like that nigga? Because you can actually dance <laughs> for real. Yeah, you can dance for real. And you a big nigga, not. He don't look goofy. Like, but, <laughs> but, I know, like, but at the end of the day, I see his videos and, it, and he pisses me, me off, nigga. And, and I'd be like, I don't know if you can fight, big nigga, so I ain't gonna try you. But at the same time, if you couldn't, I'll beat your ass. I got your back. I got your back. Thanks, Corey. I appreciate you, bro. I got your back. Man, nah, he, uh, he, I see his videos and I'm like, it makes me laugh. Okay. You know, I respect his hustle. I saw he him. He hustling for sure. I, I respect it, man. You know, shout out to you if you see this podcast, man. We you actually know. have him. <laughs> <laughs> what was we hiding this big nigga? He just this come out. This big nigga wasn't hiding nowhere in my house. He just hiding this nigga behind. <laughs> yeah. And before being on screen yourself, you've been a celebrity trainer. Yeah. I, I know you You helped Michael B. Jordan transfer him for Creed. Yes. Mm-hmm. You have other big... Uh, I've, I've trained a lot of people, man, from... Um, you know what's... He was a big name when I got out here. He still is a big name. He's grown to be a bigger name. He didn't keep oh, it up. Thanks, sir. Um, I'm just it's okay. We're gonna start tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we did start. <laughs> now, nah, I mean, I'm trained from like John Boyega. I'm trained Michael B. Jordan. You know, the Lance Gross, the TJs, the Queen Latifah, uh, Wale, uh, ASAP Rocky. Uh, yeah. Hell a, yeah. Right down that fucking list. It's a yeah. Lot. So you know some yeah. shit. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I came to Hollywood. You know, with a, a bag with oversized clothes. Remember. Yeah, for uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. And um it was it was um I didn't expect to be at this spot. I expected to like, you know, come here, make some money, go back to the south. Ended up making life for myself out here and found my niche, you know what I'm saying? And believed in it and it kept going. And then ended up doing more television, you know, brand, marketing, all of those things that helped to build me and uh it's been a crazy journey and it's just now going into a, a bigger spot, you know. You know, new 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 aspirations, new goals, new ambitions, and I'm attacking all of them. 
Yeah, I love that fight. Yeah. Yeah. So you're yeah, not you're going up. back to mailman. Never. <laughs> you're not, never. never, never, never. I don't life. even go to the post office. I <laughs> love Corey. <laughs> Corey, a real I, life dreamer. He one of them dudes that you look at. Like, I mean, you know, you live in LA for quite some time. You see a whole bunch of dreamers and people who come out and kind of believe, but don't all the way believe. Corey, just, he's a dude that's always just been a solutions guy and trying to figure it out for himself. He's a dreamer. I rock with him. I'll be seeing him out here. Look, he'll come to me and be like, I got this new thing. I'm doing it to this. And no matter what, he he definitely, like, makes sure that he emerges himself in whatever it is. And he's like, right, I'm going to really be doing whatever it is. I imagine the mentality comes probably from, like, uh, um, body transformation mm-hmm. and, like, constantly transforming, constantly being like, okay, mm-hmm. well, yeah, people who say, okay, oh, well, you and bodybuilding for this thing and then the other thing might just be for physique and this other thing might be over here for this way so it's like all these different ways that you're looking at how you can transform your body he kind of you know wanted to do that with his career and i just be respecting him for it he like okay well if i want to flip this thing around and do this, this when i see this nigga and he be doing like his action movie shit i be looking and i'm like nigga ain't no way that in my head that that you can't do that shit. Mm-hmm. That you could definitely do that shit. Like, what do you I, think are the biggest principles that transform, <laughs> like that trans uh, translate from the gym to like real life goal? I think it was it's, it's it's life. First of all, so when I realized I could change my body, which is the hardest thing to change because you have to control it, so that discipline comes from you. When you can do that, you can do anything. And when I realized that, I saw how much discipline it took myself to do it, and I was able to take that into life. So it was like my transformation. I took that same blueprint and I put it into life. And if I can overcome that and do that, there's nothing I can't do. And like, you know, like he was saying, like, you know, I can change my body for this and do like that. I started seeing like these things in life is not that hard either. You know, I can sit back and, you know, when I, when I started, she was training for the movie uh, Without Remorse and I was doing um, weapons training. I never, ha- I never held an AR-15. But if you saw me train that second day, actually a couple hours into the day, you would have thought I've been doing it for a very long time. So I pick up really quick. And it's just from like, the gym taught me everything, man. Like I always say, like, if it wasn't for fitness, I don't know where I'd be at. And I was able to translate those things into, you know, acting into different disciplines that I do. And it's all about the muscle memory. It's all about the, the, the consistency. It's all about the reps. I think about that. Mm. The reps I get in the gym is the reps I get in life. Yeah. You know? Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah. We're going to talk about what we like to do on the show is we like to talk about the world because we feel like a lot of shows do like, uh, you know, those deep dive interview backstory shit. And sometimes we like talking about the world today because sometimes it gets us even deeper into mm-hmm. people's brains and how they think about shit. That's like, true. And um, we're smoking this week, a little CBX Tropicana, one of my oh, favorites. Yeah. So I'm going to... Go ahead, grind this up and let you roll this up because I can't okay, roll. Uh, and we're drinking uh, Aquafina. Yeah, Aquafina. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, the sponsors <laughs> us this week. Uh, keeping it a little clean this week. But yeah, it's also Men's Health Month. I know it's Pride Month as well. Uh, so we'll probably, you know, be trying to have guests. I think we got some guests yeah, reflecting just, that in yeah, the coming weeks. Both things, and we definitely want to make sure we go ride health. And so we appreciate you coming on the show, Corey. I appreciate y'all, man. My guy. Let's jump into the news. Apple's iOS 16 will allow users to edit and unsend text messages. Hell yeah, Will. <clears throat> iOS 16 is going to introduce some big changes for iPhone users. Announced during Apple's WWDC event, the latest update to the iPhone will allow users to edit and unsend messages you've already sent in its messages app. The news was shared by software engineer senior VP as he also revealed that users will be able to mark threads as unread so they can return to them later. The ability to edit or unsend a text will be available for up to 15 minutes after the message is initially sent and users can recover text up to 30 days after they are sent. We're adding three of the most highly requested features to messages. First, have you ever sent a message only to immediately realize you didn't quite say what you intended? Well, no worries because now you can edit any message you just sent so embarrassing typos can be a thing of the past. During the description. The presentation was paired with a vis- visual depiction of how it will all work, showing the editing. <laughs> but dude taking his dick away. <laughs> Unseeing all the shit. So 15 minutes, if somebody replies to that, you still have 15 minutes to edit to change, it. Yeah. So you can go back and forth for 15 minutes before going back and changing everything you actually just <laughs> But 15 said. minutes is a long, long time. time. 15 minutes is a long time. It's enough time definitely that 
you have had time to sit with yourself, so whatever you have written in those 15 minutes, you should be able to be like, all right, dude, do better. Maybe I should unsend this. But in the same breath, like, that person may have already seen this. There's no solution for that. And then you unsend it? That's kind of weird. That's weird. Right? It's super weird. It's like going to your DMs and seeing the unsent DM mm-hmm. mark. you like, what the fuck you said? Right. Now I gotta know like what you Snapchat. said. Snapchat. Snapchat is like that. Will it say unsent? Like, will it, will it have a record that it was unsent? I don't know. It doesn't say if it'll have that. But I know on Snapchat, you can see if someone has unsent a message. Because they can can only unsend it before you open it, right? I don't know. I think it should be like that. That's what it is with email. Yeah. Yeah. With Gmail, you can send stuff. I thought you um, only had like 30 seconds to unsend. Yeah. Well, you can change it in your settings. I think you can change it to like five minutes. Oh, smart. But once somebody sees it, you can't unsend it. You can't unsend it. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I already seen that shit. You can't make me unsee it, motherfucker. It's like saying, I'm sorry. It's like, yeah. I said, I'm sorry, I'm going to take it back. You're like, nah. 15 minutes too long. <laughs> people going to use time. that in court. I, yeah, people, yeah, it's a legal yeah. document. They're going to screenshot. But like, my, see- my point is this, well, like, yeah, okay, it's a legal document. Is there a loophole there? Because, like, what if, like, 15 minutes, you like, oh, I sent that in the in the first fake document. That wasn't what I really meant to say. <laughs> meant to say my one. real document is this one right here in which I said this right here. Like, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, and, like, in court, like you're saying, like in a case, it said, oh, this person did this thing, and they wrote something that was incriminating as fuck mm-hmm. in that first five minutes. Can he now delete it? Is, is the it judge on the- is like, well, he did unsend yeah, yeah. it. He did, he did. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, is, is that not, like... Is that not where we're headed to? Her? Is that the future? Is that like not a place in which, oh, he did really unsend it? Like, will we be looking in the future in court and they'll be like, unsend documents under four minutes are allowed to happen? Like, I think if she, if, if, if the person who received it, I said that, she, but has a screenshot, that should definitely count as evidence. But the problem is, you know, sometimes you don't always screenshot things and maybe you don't know that unsending is a thing now. Mm. And then it just disappears in your inbox. If somebody's already screenshot your shit, then yeah, they already take you down, fam. <laughs> screenshots. That's it. Like you have like you have a screenshot my shit? Screenshot uh, their text, text messages? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I'm saying if I'm screenshotting your text, like if I'm not doing it just to like You send it to somebody send else. Send it to somebody like, else. What you think? Or get an opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something really quick. But if I'm screenshotting it just for my own files, I'm already building the case. Uh, That's what I'm saying. If that person is just screenshotting your text messages just because, just for fucking future rapping, bitch, you already <laughs> built the case then. Well, I that, think as a girl, we screenshot like cute messages. Like, oh, that was really Ain't no sweet. nigga ever been in court like did you say did you say <laughs> miss you very much like, what the fuck? was that you <laughs> ain't the only thing people who scream no, no, I don't know, but i don't think screenshotting a message is weird you don't i don't text anything that i might not want to get screenshot yeah i don't screenshot shit if i screenshot somebody shit that means they did something so wild that i was like i gotta get evidence you gotta, you gotta see <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. I got to get proof this happened. <laughs> I'm thinking of the, like, screenshots I've, like, seen of, like, a guy who really grossly hits on a girl and then she, yeah. like, says she's not interested. And he's like, fuck you, bitch, you stupid bitch. I hate you, bitch. You ugly yeah. anyway. And then I de- hate you. And he deletes it. And, yeah, I mean, now he just <laughs> now now he can just delete that and there'd be no paper trail. You know, or think about somebody who, like, who, like, you get to the end of like at the end it gets creepy or rapey or abusive, but at the beginning now all those text messages are unsent. It's like you have no evidence of how you got there. Yeah, it will be wild if people can delete their text messages after someone's like replied because that's going to mm, change the game completely. Is, is this up to thirty yeah. days? You can you can it says you can ret- retrieve deleted text messages up to thirty days. So it's like after you delete it, maybe you can put it back. I think that's what that means. Can both parties you can archive your shit? Text message. Apparently, that's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, both parties can receive. It's yeah, it's it's really still blur. I think people were happy with this announcement though. I think that like got excited. there were a whole bunch of things. Like I think that <clears throat> it seems like more men are over the board right now. At Apple. <laughs> 
uh, than women. Back in the day, you see my women, all the features were featured for women. It was like, yeah, and now they can take your thumb and put it on the fucking phone, <laughs> nigga, while you did and get your shit. You was like, that was a feature they created for some angry wife. And now they're probably like, men, you know what? I've got a feature for you. Unsend text messages. Man, guys got Is happy. your dick embarrassing? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever sent a text message that you regretted uh, sending? Uh, like, I've never sent a dick pic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a, a text, yeah, for sure. I a whole bunch of te- I'm a person, yeah, and I'm a Gemini, everybody. and my fucking Gemini, I'm a lunatic. So of course, I like <laughs> sent messages where I was like, I shouldn't have said it like that. And I, I, it's nothing worse because I don't. Somebody's so like crazy in the moment, and I will take a breath and be like, that was crazy. <laughs> like I'm fully aware that was not okay. So I think it's made for a nigga like me. I think this whole iOS this situation for was for me. It was like, Gemini's, I got y'all. It was like, y'all say crazy shit, but then y'all want to be forgiven right away. Here we are. Kanye <laughs> just unsending everything. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you can't talk to Kanye about shit mm-mm, right now. Mm-mm. Kim Kardashian says she'd eat poop every single day if it made her look younger. Mm. <laughs> I love our transitions. <laughs> that was Kanye. Yeah, that, that, was, that was smooth. <laughs> that was like. Kim Kardashian has boldly claimed that she would eat poop every single day if it made her look younger. When it comes to fashion and beauty, Kim has no limits on how far she'll go. She famously lost a worrying 16 pounds in three weeks just so she could fit into Marilyn Monroe's historic dress for the Met Gala. The businesswoman has also previously said that she wouldn't mind wearing adult diapers in the name of fashion. Now that Kim is launching her own skincare cool, line called Skin by Kim. She's conf- she's confessed that when it comes to looking youthful, there's nothing she won't try, even human waste. Wow. If you told me that I literally had to eat poop every single day and I would look younger, I might. I just might, she told the New York Times. She just knows how to get headlines. <laughs> Sorry if I fucked that up. Sorry if it doesn't no, This is great. This is fun. Um, um, I think eating poop is crazy. Did she even specify whose poop? Was she just like poop? She did not. She didn't say like... Shit. I'll eat my own poop. At least she knows what she's eating. And she's like, baby poop? That's understandable. Not understandable. It is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Baby poop is understandable. <laughs> people, pe- well, people do uh, take, I think, like, baby's pee uh, early on and use it as, like, face. Uh, Who are like, these people? The placenta? I've heard placenta. No, yeah, placenta, yeah. placenta and breast well. milk. But no, no, but actual pee as well. You're no. a baby's urine. I've never, heard, urine. That. never huh? heard that never before. Heard Look it up. I'm it's scared to. <laughs> yeah, don't look up baby's pee. <laughs> That's black market shit only. Um, no, I'm just saying. Yeah, okay. Everybody's against me now. <laughs> I can feel the room came in. It's getting smaller and smaller. I, I looked around like nobody wants to eat baby poop. <laughs> I didn't need the bed. I'm like, you haven't lit I'm up yet. Side. You have no excuse. <laughs> Apparently, I'm on the side of eating baby poop. No, uh, no, I'm just saying like... That's a crazy statement just to be like, oh, if it took me eating shit every day, I'd do it. Is there a health thing that you, do you feel like there is something that I've you never, would, you wouldn't eat shit, right? Can we mark that off the list? <laughs> never eat shit. Okay. Is there something that, below it that you like, if that got me in shape, I'm down to do that? No. Yeah, is there something that some people do that pee, you think baby is pee. like no? Pee. Are you fucking with the baby not, pee? I'm not doing go. baby pee. You gotta just wash your hands, and baby, in your face. What about more. your own pee? What if it was like? <laughs> nah. What if it was like? But what if you found out that like this will make you live five years longer, or it'll just, get you? There's another way. Super. <laughs> <laughs> there's more than one way to skin the cat. I ain't about to be. That's that. true. We gotta figure it out. The other way. <laughs> we gonna figure it out. I ain't eating poop and I ain't drinking piss. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got okay you. go ahead. Hit me up. All right. <laughs> the baby pee mm-hmm. is so in stores now. It's become a thing that's sweeping the nation. It's not even just a own individual regimen you got going on where you're buying baby piss on the black market. You can walk in Walgreens or CVS and right next to Electrolytes, they got baby pee. Peterade. Peterade. Peterade is Pedialyte. You know the greatest thing about a store? The greatest thing about a store. Yeah. There's always other shit to buy. Yeah, what does that mean? They can have Pedialyte, (laughs) Pissalite, (laughs) and I'm going to drink the Electrolytes. Poopalite. (laughs) Poopalite. It just ain't, it ain't hitting on that. Kim Kardashian for (laughs) Poopalite. Now they say all all this time has been pee inside of Pedialyte. Yeah. I guess I've been drinking pee. Like Coca Cola? Well, like what Coca Cola with the cocaine era? If we found out there was I don't pee think we'd change. We wouldn't even change it. We wouldn't even change it. 
What if you found out that something you were already taking like was actually like there was baby pee inside? Would you be like, I'm going to stop? Or would you be like, I guess we're this far? I guess we're this far. Okay. Okay. So it just has to be before you have to know. <laughs> so you, tell can, me. So you, you wouldn't stop though. <laughs> <laughs> so I have you go in with, It's kind of like, uh, in my head. Corey's like, I didn't know what the fuck I was getting out coming on the show. Just do show. <laughs> we convince people we're talking that about baby pee. We convince people that they like baby pee. So it's not like I now leave here asking myself, do I eat shit? <laughs> <laughs> do I like this? What? <laughs> Am I in shape? It's a question. Right. I look in the mirror. Well, I wonder what would happen if I did eat poop. Okay, being serious though, <laughs> is, is is that um, do we are we just expecting too much from Kim Kardashian? Like, is that her being a good role model for her to be uh, out here publicly saying she would eat shit if it kept her in shape? Is that is that okay or is that fucking up little girls no. around the world being like maybe we should try it now just no. to see? As long as she doesn't eat the shit. <laughs> I don't think she would ever do it. You say like actually eat so if she if she like took it in a different way, you okay with it? But you I don't said, want her to eat the shit. I say as long as she doesn't eat it at all. She she's like, literally saying I will do anything and everything just to continue to look young. Instead oh, she of just slams being like, baby blood for sure. For sure. For sure. Hands down. For sure. She's like, she's got a baby, she's got baby blood stuff in her thought in her. What? <laughs> yes. Pete Davidson looks like a vampire. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's some shit they into for that's sure. That's because of the blood she got into Pete Davidson. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, so, so what about losing ten? I feel like losing ten pounds in three weeks sounds insane. Sixteen. Sixteen. Losing pounds. six is that for women possible? For women, that's crazy. For How men, do you that's even possible. Do something like that. For women, that's hard. That's it. For women, that's super hard. Because women don't lose numbers, they lose inches. Mm-hmm. So they don't lose pounds, they lose inches first. To lose six, that's a lot. That's a lot. That's so, like starve, starving, training yeah, all that's day. That's why I think that's she like, was like, What is it, like straight fasting? Or what would you have to yeah, do? Fast, it's so many no ways. Food. It's like people do water diets, people do juicing, people do you know, intermittent fasting, one meal a day, which is called OMAD. People do, like, people do like just strictly like protein, just protein, no carbohydrates, which that's still a go against it. But it's, it's going to come back. <clears throat> it's going to come back. Even more, so you're gonna rebound. That's hard to that's hard to maintain for that long. Mm-hmm. Is there a role model on our end as men that you'd be like, yo, if he came out, who's this equivalent to? And then come if LeBron came out tomorrow and was like, yo, I eat shit for breakfast. <laughs> a lot of people do it. A lot, a lot of people shittios, <laughs> shit loops. Shit uh, loops. <laughs> a lot of people do it because you know people look up to celebrities and athletes as being like. The people to follow behind, so they'll do it. Well, it ain't the same thing, I guess, because LeBron's an athlete, mm-hmm. so his body is like everything. Like Kim Kardashian is five feet. Is her feet. body not everything though? So but she's also like brand? five feet. Like I don't think we should put so much weight on her. Of no like, pun intended. no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> like versus LeBron's, like yo, he's actually paid to take care of his body and do these things. I was things thinking, I was thinking, hers is more aesthetic. Yeah, and hers his is like, more functional. But that's yeah. why it's also sad because I'm like, we need to normalize, especially for like for women and for young girls. Like, it's okay to grow old and to look like you're getting older. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I feel like she's sending the wrong message by saying that, that she would literally Don't do die. absolutely anything. <laughs> right, because I mean, even me as somebody who's on day one, intermittent fasting, before <laughs> picture, <Very good. laughs> uh, I am like, Okay, let's see if I can get 10 pounds in 10 weeks. Now I'm like, she did 10 in three weeks? Can I do 10 in three weeks? And like, I'm a, I'm like, I don't know. I'm a man. I'm not a teenage girl. I'm I'm sure they would feel the same way. Like, so you, can I? Like, can I? So you feel the pressure already. Chris. I could do 10 pounds in three weeks? Yeah, because you can't let yeah. him beat you. Yeah? A she man? did 16. Well, she did 16 in three weeks. You water weight and stuff like that. But then too. it's just going to bounce <clears throat> back. Your Why you keep trying to shit her, take Depends. her shit down to 10, fam? It was 16. Give her her numbers. Okay, sorry. Take her and it wasn't down. like she was overweight either, which that's the crazy part. Because I could see if it was somewhere you could like, oh, okay, you could, you could lose a few pounds. But I'm like, she's of, already tiny. But you could lose but, a lot of fluid too. So it depends on you lost mm-hmm. a lot of fluid or you lost fat. It's yeah. a difference. Got it. So she was probably like but, wrestling shit, like lose, like cutting weight in order to fit into the dress. Just like that, yeah. But I think also on top of that, we got to think about the time era and period that we're talking about. Marilyn Monroe and them were all of 98 pounds back mm-hmm. then. It's like and still considered. Yeah, that's not Kim's that's shape. Not. That's never been Kim's shape. I also thought Marilyn Monroe was a kind of a, a curvy woman. I, I mean, yeah, for she, white but people back then, back then she, she was job. curvy and she was literally weighed like 130 pounds or something uh-huh. like that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And she was considered. You know what I'm so curvy. for Kim to be like, oh, I gotta lose all this weight, it's like that's a little different. 
It's a little different. I mean, I hear, I, I hear, I guess to get, what was the dress? $5 million dress? Yeah. That's, That's crazy. What it was auctioned at. I think him is just Marilyn Monroe, so I get it. <laughs> They're the same person. And Marilyn Monroe ate a lot of poop. Disneyland Paris apologizes to couple after staffer interrupted marriage proposal. <laughs> what did Disneyland Paris has to do? It was just was it Disneyland Paris is <clears throat> place at? Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> so much for being the happy. I, I thought it was the Disneyland. They were like Paris was like, we gotta step forward for the Americans. <laughs> One random guy. <laughs> Disneyland Paris received backlash this week after one of its workers ruined a marriage proposal in front of Sleeping Beauty's castle. A now viral video showed the man kneeling on one knee as he presented the ring to his Woke partner. Up. The woman becomes visibly emotional and puts her hand over her mouth as onlookers immediately break into applause. However, before the man can stand on his feet, a nearby Disneyland staffer rushes to grab the ring box out of his hand. <laughs> Which the is worker crazy. who has not been identified <laughs> proceeds to walk off the platform and gushes for the couple to follow. The clearly confused man follows the employee down the steps and said, she said yes. Yes, that's great, the worker responds, but over here will be even better. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. um, the clip was originally posted on Wedding uh, or on Reddit. The video has garnered mixed responses, but the majority have been critical of Disneyland Paris and the employee. If some stranger ran up and snatched a diamond ring out of my hand, more than the moment would be ruined, one Reddit wrote. It's surreal how such little power can go to people's heads, another commented. A spokesperson for Disney says the theme park has since communicated with the couple and apologized. Man, I tell you this much: the niggas be willing to die with these jobs. I re I repost this shit uh, before I even knew it was gonna go viral, viral, viral like that. Because I was just like, this is crazy that niggas be really willing to die with these jobs where these motherfuckers don't care about them. This dude in which he went and took this ring out of his man's hand as he as he's proposing to his fiance is a big nigga at that. He a big dude, and this little man who literally looks like fucking Jiminy Cricket comes through, <laughs> <laughs> comes through and takes the ring out of this dude's hand, and it's like, step down right now, no. And it's so entitled, and like, the part, and I had people... Who actually reposted, I mean, commented to me and was like, well, in all fairness, it does say do not enter. I'm like, shut the fuck up. At the end of the day, this is this man's dream. There's once in a lifetime. He has thought about his wife being proposed to at fucking Disneyland, Paris specifically. <laughs> and he's like, yo, I want to give her what the fuck she deserves. And that's me starting her off. She's been a princess her whole life. And now she's going to be my queen. And this nigga ruined it. I don't know, fam. I'm cleaning his shit up. <clears throat> I'm cleaning him up. I'm beating his ass. So they're in there. So they're in a spot. That like people aren't allowed to be in. Is that what's going on? Like, yeah. Y'all watch the video? A little bit. Yeah, let's see the video. I also like that it says it garnered mixed responses because I'm interested with the other no, responses. I told you what they were. People were following were the rules. That, like, was an, a, that, that was a do not enter. And it's not even like a crazy. It's not even like the nigga wild the fuck off. It's like anybody would think to do this. Like if you watch. If you fucking won the Mario chicken, you anybody would do this. Look at this. Look, oh, and, and it looks beautiful. Andy mm. Ruiz, nigga. Oh, mm. it's just on a little like platform. Oh mm-hmm. my god, what a fucker. I hate this guy. He ran in so fast. Why nigga went all white though? I don't like that, man. I ain't gonna lie. I he's like, you're not allowed to be up here. It does not matter. You see that? Yes, hand? Mr. Mouse oh, himself. Man, told I gotta, me. I gotta watch one more time. He Whoa. comes through and takes Will the fucking ring. No, 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 he no, takes. No, 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 this is for, only. Phil, for you to touch this man's ring yeah, is so crazy to me. He's doing the job he's assigned to do. It doesn't matter what's happening up there. People aren't supposed to be there. Period. What's he supposed to do? Ignore it just because it's a pro- proposal and they get fired or written up? Not worth it for guests breaking the rules. So that's that's the response. People are so wow. Little. So many people are like, yes, the rules. are Because there's some people who are fucking <clears throat> bitter. First of all, it's probably the most magical place on earth, supposedly. That's it's the whole said. thing. If I'm going here and I break a moment and I got over here, I'm guessing you just need to go ahead and assume magic got me over here. <laughs> it allowed me to be over here and fucking propose to my girl. It's such a moment. You know what like, it took for him to get ready to propose to fam. her? You know how long they was mm-hmm. together? Yeah. You know how much that ring cost? 
we, 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 we found out it was only two weeks and the ring was $20. <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. You know how to drive to get over there? Nigga. They had on white. Outside. It was hot as hell. <laughs> it was. He had jeans on. He did. <laughs> yeah. All, All white. this for this All moment. that. Man, listen. And you ruined it. And she going to tell him it was your fault. You think she's going to blame him? She might. She'd get mad and say, why would you even do it? Why would you let him do that? Why would you? Why, why did you let him do it? And why would you be up here? Are you not willing to fight for our love? You didn't fight him. There you go. There it is. There, there's no chance to fight that guy. When do you fight you that You got to beat his ass right there. With the little guy? <laughs> you're saying. On the left hand, just go across the face. Right there. I, th- I felt like it was too I quick. Thought, I thought, no, I, I felt like when he, when he got down, he was about to grab him or something. I just, uh, that's what I saw. When he, gra- I, I, well, when he got down to the bottom, but you're also like, you're in that, you're proposing mindset. Uh, and you're at Disneyland, so you're not about you're not you're not the most not, embarrassing that But is. I'll be real with you. If I'm holding my ring, I'm not losing that ring, number one. Ain't nobody's coming in and walking no. in and taking the you ring. Mean, Get the fuck out of here. No, Secondly, no. fam, I don't know. I just don't want to even think about it because it's so crazy of a concept for you to believe that you you just work here. They could fire you tomorrow. They don't care about you. I don't people, even know who you are. I mean, some people Ooh, love towards Disney. You said what? You say? Ooh, more people. More go. people want to go there and just try to look for him and just be. They're gonna they gonna heckle him. They're, they're but gonna, what if what if like they were moved. like? Mm-hmm. What if they were like Jock? We had another proposal on the stage. I thought you were watching the stage. No, nah, maybe bro. a lot of these happen nah. because it is. A, it so is, now you're finding yourself on this well, there's side. There's definitely a lot of people going up there to take photos. 100. Uh, percent And he definitely always yeah. has to bring people off. And they should honestly have a fucking line for it. They should have their own stage for proposals that is fucking parallel to the actual stage they use for shit, just for people to fucking propose. People get photo ops. They have a full line. Babe, what are we in line people? for? That might have been his ex shit. <laughs> that was his ex girlfriend. Bitch, that's it. <laughs> said, yeah. nope, not well, today. Wait, well, you didn't lie to I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I, yeah, I, th- I thought at first uh, he maybe he was intertwined with the couple. Yeah, I was like, he, you're not doing it at my job. Man. <laughs> After I saw the guy, I was like, I don't think this guy's intertwined <laughs> with this couple. No. Uh-uh. Uh, yeah, that sucks. I ain't going to lie. That, that, like, really broke my heart when I saw that shit because I was like, you, you got to fight this dude, but also. Like you said, you probably are in your nicest and happiest moment of your life, and you're trying to be like super, you know, okay. at, at peace. Yeah, you're like, I don't even know what the fuck just happened, fam. <laughs> <laughs> Them niggas took my ring. <laughs> they can do that. <laughs> you just take it. That's, fine. That's crazy. Alan Cummings' missing co-star chimp found alive after his owner faked his death. Last May, Tonka the Chimpanzee, an elderly ape who starred in George of the Jungle and Buddy, alongside actor Alan Cummings in 1997, died, according to court reports. The chimp has recently suffered a stroke and died from heart failure. His owner, Tanya Haddix, claimed submitting a declaration in court documents to a Missouri judge that detailed how the animal's body was burned in a fire pit. But this week, Tonka was found alive, secretly hidden away from the, for the past year in Haddix's Sunrise Beach, Missouri home, where he reportedly had a 60-inch TV, an interactive iPad, had like touch device and had just celebrated St. Patrick's Day among a few of Haddock's closest friends. On Thursdays, authority searched her home as part of an emergency court order obtained by PETA, whom Haddock's has been locked in a legal battle with since 2018. Faking Tonka's death was a last ditch effort by her to keep her beloved chimp after a judge ordered her to turn over Tonka and six other chimpanzees. Uh. The organization claims that when Tonka was found, he was being kept in a small cage nailed to the floor of Haddock's basement. He was reportedly overweight, wasn't allowed outside and had no companionship with other chimpanzees, something that's crucial for chimps, according to the animals' rights group. Despite keeping Tonka hidden away for the past year, Haddix was finally busted by a recording of a phone call that PETA said it had received where the exotic animal breeder confessed that Tonka was still alive but would be euthanized Euthanized, Euthanized on June 2nd. With officials still on her property as of Friday, Haddix admits to Rolling Stone that she had lied about Tonka's death, saying he's been with her the whole time. Damn, this Isn't is this is fucking insane. So it's like we don't really know what's going on because it's it's interesting, right? When these animal rights groups come in and they're like, "Hey, this is not okay for the chimp. The chimp needs to be outside with other chimps." They may be right, right? I'm not gonna say they're wrong because that sounds 
fucking normal mm -hmm. and natural for the actual animal. In the same breath, when these people already take these animals for so long and they make them where they these animals can't go back home, nigga. They can't just go back into the wild. They gonna beat the shit out of this chip as soon as he get out there. They gonna treat them, let them know you're weak. Haven't you seen Planet of the Apes, bitch? <laughs> this <laughs> happens every time. Uh, right. <laughs> they bully these chips when they go back to the hood. These chips <laughs> are not from the hood anymore. These chips were raised in a suburb home where they've been babies and gave iPads and fucking direct TV. <laughs> these but chips Caesar, but Caesar. This Chip was a movie star, Listen, fam. Caesar actually was. He left and went hanging with the real people. And he came back and said, bitch, don't y'all play with me. Remember who I am. <laughs> that is true. That's what he did. But Caesar wasn't a movie star. He <laughs> wasn't. This chip, this chip was pampered and treated completely different. Than he Caesar. had a TV and an iPad. He did. That's wild. That's a setup, <laughs> Yeah, man. that was a weird... That kind of, I feel like we grazed over that at the beginning of the, the episode. Because mm -hmm. we were mad that he was underground, uh, overfed... And not getting any interaction, but now he's got an iPad. Who said he's over he's got there? A TV. Them? He's, he's like, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> he's overweight. He's, he's like, like, I feel I'm good. Like, that's y'all opinion of me. <laughs> I'm catching up on Stranger Things and you bitches into it. <laughs> Shit, this back here. Look, it's COVID. I'm living downstairs. Um, I'm eating a lot. He was on uh, looking at Planet of the Apes. Like, look at these niggas. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I would never be doing that. <laughs> Couldn't live like that. Great nah, answers, though. <laughs> he right. You got this. He's like, oh, oh, you think the chimp is mad that they're all CGI now? You think he's like, that's a talent back in oh, my day. Oh, shit. Bro, you know, how, you know how far Planet of the Apes goes back? Yeah. Like, one day I was, because I like the new one, so I was just trying to go back to see. I thought Mark Wahlberg was like the first one. This shit go way back in the 70s. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets Charles real racist. Heston, right? It like, gets real racist. You can keep going back. It's horrible. It's like a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. And, and uh, wait, does it say that? Because I don't know this first movie they said. He's not from Planet of the Apes. He's from Dustin Check In, right? <laughs> um, with he, Alex Cummings. He's from it was... Buddy. Wait. Alan Cummings is in Buddy. Because isn't Alan Cummings also in George of the Jungle? Which would mean that this gym starred in two movies with the same actor. Yeah, they want to work together. It's kind of funny that, like, he was like, man. I mean, it probably was a. If, if the well, first one is like a buddy movie with a chimp. And then he was like, I'm going to be in George of the Jungle. I got to get yeah, in George what of the movie Jungle. Was he in? George of the Jungle and Buddy. He, and and Alan guy. Cummings was in both of those too, right? Yeah. Wow. So they really are bugs. I mean, yeah. apparently Alan Cummings, when the when the um, chimp was missing, he donated money to find the chimp. So there they had is, a connection. Somebody is living such like a movie life right now, like dealing with PETA and trying to get this chimpanzee and someone's faking a death and they're living downstairs. There's like money and riches and this is a good like... <clears throat> also, who was the friend that sold them out to PETA? That's yeah, wild. Yeah, that shit crazy. It's they got of, a it, recording from their phone, like a recording from a phone conversation? Sounds like today's day, you know, just people threatening out their boys. You Why can't trust to nobody. Yeah. You to, I respect that putting his putting his monkey on. I respect that, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he's putting <laughs> he, the monkey he on. Good. He good. He, he put I mean, you gonna be in this movie. I'm doing this one. He's like Adam Sandler, man. He put his on. This exactly. is look, this is some, <laughs> I like this that some real racist shit. This is like on some like they watched one monkey thrive and was like, not on our watch. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga's gotta remember where he came from. The fucking jungle. He needs to struggle. We'll send you back. <laughs> he's like, what the fuck? Oh, LeBron James is officially the first active NBA player to become a billionaire. LeBron James has joined Rare Company once again, but this time not for his work on the court. It's been revealed that James is officially the first active NBA player to become a billionaire. The only other NBA players to reach the monumental milestone are Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant, and both became billionaires after they retired. Kevin Durant is the closest active NBA player to reaching a billion status after LeBron, with a net worth of roughly $580 million. In an interview with GQ, James talked about how becoming a billionaire was one of his biggest goals. It's my biggest milestone, Jane said. Obviously, I want to maximize my business, and if I happen to get it, if I happen to be a billion-dollar billion athlete, hip-hop hooray, oh, my God, I'm going to be so excited. Forbes estimates that a large portion of Bond's fortune comes from cash and other investments, which accounts for over $500 million of his net worth. Another significant chunk is believed to come from his Spring Hill company, which is responsible for movies like Space Jam, alongside Warner Brothers, and several other high-profile projects. 
Other investments LeBron has made, like Blaze Pizza and becoming part owner of Fenway Sports Group, and his stakes in real estate have helped him become a billionaire as well. Shout to LeBron, man. Wow. Shout to that kid from Akron doing his motherfucking numbers for real and becoming a billionaire. I mean, that's a, that's amazing feat. That's crazy. And I think if nothing else, we've all loved LeBron's journey on getting to that billion. It's been mm-hmm. such a respectable and I'll say um, um, proud black way of him getting there. Just being, you know, unapologetically black in everything that he does. And he is truly an amazing voice. And to see him get there the way he has and be a great role model, I just fuck with LeBron. I love mm-hmm. LeBron. Mm-hmm. To me, he's the king. I say all the time, to me, he's my favorite <clears throat> basketball player ever. People get mad at me for saying that. He's like, you from Chicago? How the fuck you going to say that? But for me, it's because what LeBron does on and off the court and – this just he did a lot more than just shut up and dribble. So yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, he's it, it's, it was. I used to train his wife, well, Savannah, one of my clients, was, was one of my clients too, really close to them. And seeing like them, like personal space, it's just a it's a real family, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's a regular, it's like Brian is he's like talking to you, yeah, you know, he's not, he's, he's he, that's who he is. And he's it's it's uh. It's good to see that, and you I think get that from him too. Yeah, I, like. I think that shows anyone. You know, you work hard enough. You 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 discipline yourself and you stay consistent. You can really be what you want to be. Yeah. It wasn't no um was it wasn't a gimmick of how he got there. You know what I'm saying? It, it shows what hard work really gets you. Yeah. We, I, um, again, I love it and just to watch it, like mm-hmm. truly watch it front row. You just like oh shit, like just to see the way he's done it. It's mm-hmm. been super super dope. A billion, that's crazy. You know what I'm Damn saying? Young to get a billion. Yeah. yeah, yeah young. No, he's still playing. Young for like anyone to get a billion. Not even 40 years old. That, yeah, and it, he must be one of the youngest self made billionaires. And it to be in cash, like, like a lot of his assets, over 50% to be in cash is so beautiful. Just because if you know the game, mm. like a lot of those people don't have the liquidity like that. They have, they have. Assets, but for Brian's assets, a lot of to be cash. It's just like it's got to be such a beautiful thing, such a yeah, beautiful and he was thing. Actually, and he was actually paid that money. I, I mean, and so in comparison to other other billionaires, he actually pays taxes too. And he's, he's, which I mean, you know, like those those other billionaires, like Jeff Bezos, gets a seventy thousand dollars salary. And then he gets a bunch of taxes, which makes him worth a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. He doesn't pay, mm. or uh, not taxes, he gets a bunch of stocks that make him worth a billion dollars. He doesn't pay on those stocks. So it is kind of nice that because he has that 500 billion cash and got those high scores, like he actually paid his fair share mm-hmm. when comparing him to other billionaires. Right. Yeah. Huh. Nice, LeBron. Go, LeBron. You're pretty good. Shout out, Bron Bron. Kanye's Donda Sports reportedly assigns Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is the newest addition to Kanye West Donda Sports. Brown has become the first NBA player to sign with Ye, following the footsteps of Super Bowl winner Aaron Donald, who called his own signing to Donda Sports a no-brainer. The Boston Celtics guard and Ye evidently made things official when Yeezy attended a Warriors and Celtics game back in March, where they posed for photos together. It was previously revealed that NFL star Antonio Brown was assuming the role of president within the organization when AB shared with his fans back in February that he had booked the the Donda Sweep for the Super Bowl. In an interview earlier this year, he spoke on what it was like to work on Donda Sports with Ye. We're just excited about the Donna Sports brand and making this thing a competitive sports brand to the athletes. I don't think there's a lot of fashion lines for athletes wearing fashionable and comfortable clothes. So with a guy like Kanye West being able to partner with him and work with him to provide more creative genius ideas for fashion looks for athletes in general, I'm just grateful for the opportunity here soon to share what we have with the world. And you guys are hearing it first. We have some exciting things to look forward to. I think this is just super intriguing. Super fucking intriguing. <laughs> Number one, it's crazy. It's just crazy to me. Number one, I, th- I, I hear from what I can tell. I don't know much about him. I want to act like I know everything about the young man. But uh, uh, Jalen Brown, I hear Jalen Brown, he's a smart dude. Smart dude. Uh, Aaron Donald, I don't know as well. Don't know really, you know, kind of where he leans or what he says or what he represents. But uh, Jalen Brown seems like a very smart dude. So for one of the smart dudes in the NBA to be signing with fucking Kanye West in who I consider 
a great artist, but one of the most unstable people right now in front of us that we just don't know where Kanye is mentally. And then for the president of the actual sports company to also be Antonio Brown, two of the most unstable people who are in front of us. Like, I just, it's just crazy that real athletes who are playing right now. One of them is in the fucking NBA Finals playing right now is signing with Kanye West. It's just crazy. Some I don't people, know. Some people just like to be, you know, associated with something that they feel is going to bring them to a certain place. But that's, um, <clears throat> that's, uh, that's a ship that can possibly sink at any moment. Yeah, I'm just more saying. Also, that's real money involved. Yeah, a though. lot of money. Like, like when you're talking about somebody like Jalen Brown, let's just use him. He'll go into another max deal, making probably upward of two hundred and fucking fifty million dollars. Shit. When you're talking about giving away twenty five million dollars to Kanye West or whatever it is, if it's an agent fee, even if it's less than that, even if it's five percent, then what's that? Twelve point five. Even if it's twelve point five, that's real money. Can I get a refresher on what Donda Sports is? Nigga, we don't know. That's the whole point is what I'm saying. Just because when he said he was going to change the future of sports fashion, I was like, oh, it's it's going to be like athleisure and stuff. But then you said get percentage. Is it like a it's management an agency. company? It's an, agency. it's an agency. It's the same as Rock Sports. Like Rock Sports. How Rock Nation has Rock Nation. And they have Rock Sports as well. And they, or, yeah, they, and they represent they represent athletes. athletes. Yeah, they, they, the I'm, agent. I'm, I'm quite sure there's a, 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 a... Yeah, but I'm quite sure there's a board of people that they hire that actually can run the place. And Antonio Brown probably can't make a decision without the board agreeing to it. But then you never know. No, this is Kanye West. I, I think that you, you would... You don't de- think Kanye has like a sports agent guy that Jalen was... No, Jalen was like, okay, I, I press this guy. No, so I was going to just say, I don't know if Kanye... Okay, so the way they'll do these deals normally is like, it's even for Rock Nation. They went with CAA. CAA ran basically their sports agency for mm-hmm. them. They were like, we already have the infrastructure. We have a sports agency department. We, you're already here at CAA, or we're going to represent Rock Nation as you know an agency to we'll help, help you, hand, you hire facilitate the right this. people. Who yes, know what they're that, doing. that could possibly be the case with Kanye West and Don the Sports. Right. Very well, maybe. Also, from what I hear from many people who work with Kanye, I don't know if he runs his shit. As, I guess, tight or like as business savvy oriented as you would think somebody of that magnitude would. I think that Kanye is very much so Gemini, big Gemini energy, <laughs> and is sporadic and kind of crazy. It, June 7th. Okay. Yep, yeah, his birthday is, I think, is in the 7th? Yeah, like tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, mm. so it's Gemini I, season. Yeah, it's Gemini season. So like, so you're listening to a Gemini who can tell y'all this thing is crazy, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm signing with him. I think if if you if I want something again, unless you're just like, oh, it's Jalen Brown. I'm already signed to Adidas. This is gonna allow me to get my own Kanye West design shoe. Will Jalen Brown will be our first sports athlete that has an Adidas Kanye West shoe? If these are the things you're thinking about which i think they probably are then yeah that makes somewhat sense mm. again this person running my business though mm. is just something that's scary to me yeah. and i ain't trying to shoot on kanye because i won't be able to get that bag i hope he's doing better my bad hope he's actually doing well if i think kanye is a brilliant mind i think if he can get past some of those demons and work through some of that stuff that kanye could be a, a big asset and he's fucking he's creative as shit if nothing else he can create different things to, to build out what a brand looks like. He can help you with that for sure. And he likes looking at things differently, which any, you know, uh, legacy corporation could use, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, but I'm just, yeah, I'm interested to see what Aaron Dono and Jalen Brown, then I'm interested to see who else signs with them. We'll see in about six months. Yeah. If anything, six months. We'll see. Yeah. Kanye sports agent. Yeah, like dude, what? He's a he's gonna be a, a president, a sports agent, a musician, and a fashion. I don't model. think he's gonna run again. And then he's gonna be president. Yeah, I mean, he it's can, just it's just it's it's <laughs> that mindset of like, all right, let me let me go all into this, and now he's going all into this, and and he and he got Jalen to believe him. I get it. If nobody else, I just dropped the rap project. <laughs> and uh, I was just joking yesterday with people that I might shoot a document, documentary about me just taking the next year to try to go to the NBA. 
just taking my full time to say, okay, I'm gonna work on everything possible, and then I probably gonna make it. But uh, <laughs> nothing else. Documentary is pretty good. You're like, damn, that was crazy. He really went hard, fam. He really tried to really go to the league. Them niggas was beating this shit when he got up there, but he did look like you know he went hard and he really did get that workout with the Lakers. They sent him back home pretty quickly, but, but he, he did went, get that he, he workout. Got a workout. You know. Seems Let's like see a, it. I mean, I think big Kanye energy, bro. <laughs> that's that's what it is. Big Kanye, yeah, big Kanye energy. <laughs> I definitely have some of that. I definitely. But also, I don't, I don't know if like, if I was in Kanye's position, I don't know if I want to be like. I don't think Kanye is stable. I don't know if he can be you know anybody's agent right now. You yeah, know? just focus on the music, man. The, uh, music. I think himself. <laughs> focus on yourself. Oh yeah, that probably <laughs> like your your soul. So what is Donda Sports? Is what I put in. It says Donda Sports was founded with the vision of providing holistic support <laughs> to athletes <laughs> during and beyond their sports career. The statement says Donda Sports is a limitless organization centered on professional and wellness support in equal measure, with the ambition to work with athletes across the genders, divisions, and sports. See, you read this stuff and you know Kanye read it personally because <laughs> it doesn't say anything. It's so general. It's like. <laughs> The most it, like, it literally <laughs> said the business, our perimeters are limitless. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what do you do? We do everything. Prestige with everyone. Worldwide. <laughs> but it's beautiful. It's very Trumpian in a way. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be the greatest. What is it gonna be? I don't know. But it's gonna, but be, it's the gonna be the greatest version. <laughs> Man allegedly got mad at his girl and destroyed five million dollars worth of art in Dallas Museum. A man allegedly told authorities that he broke into the Dallas Museum of Art Wednesday night and damaged more than five million dollars worth of art pieces because he got mad at his girl. Brian Hernandez, 21, was arrested shortly after he got into the museum around 9:40 p.m. by using a metal chair to break the glass front entrance. <laughs> According to an arrest warrant, a motion sensor alerted a guard about Hernandez illegally entering the building, so he and another guard went to see what was going on. When asked what he was doing, Hernandez said he got mad at his girl so he broke in and started destroying property. He was told to sit on a bench because the guards were going to call the police and that's exactly what he did. Once officers arrived, they walked around the museum with the director of security to survey the extent of the damage. Police noticed a number of pieces valued at $5 million were destroyed. A 6th century ceramic cup known as Kylex Hercules and Naomi Lion, worth a reported 100000 was one of the items damaged. The items inside of the display case that were destroyed are rare ancient artifacts that are extremely precious and one of a kind what did this girl do? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> what she did? I was gonna ask what she did. Um, and I have I, I, my question is: Was she is she an artist? Yeah, like what what connection? What connection? Like I, me too. And the last yeah. thing is: Who is his friends? Yeah, you, you, I gotta call you. Something happened, so yeah. you can say, "Man, come over here." Not go break into a museum and just fuck shit up. Yeah, I I yeah, I just don't even I don't even get I don't know if I want to love so strong that <laughs> makes me want to go to a five million dollars in debt and destroy you, five million twenty one. He, he ain't got no real debt. It's insured. He, he ain't gonna have no debts. So he gonna get a, a little charge, maybe a misdemeanor. Well, in that case, sounds kind of fun. Yeah, it might be kind of <laughs> fun for him. At the end of the day, I think he gonna smack on the wrist, which is crazy. But in Dallas, Texas. I don't think it matters. You heard his last name. What was it? Hernandez. Hernandez. I don't think it matters. I think it does in Dallas. I think that he's going to jail. Oh, no, I think he's going to jail for, for a real. few. His last name is Hernandez. I don't think he's going for long. I don't know. I don't know. Either. They stole the artifacts anyway. <laughs> I did wonder if I did my people. I want to know what she did. Rich person throwing a tantrum. But I don't what, think that was the case. He's yeah, being held like, on a $100,000 bond. He was arrested for criminal mischief. He got out. And yeah, I just said he's. Told you he's he good. It's not that bad. That's crazy. Told what, you. Did, what did she do? Yeah, but like it don't I matter. I don't think she did she anything. Liked. I think that guy has mad <coughs> anger problems. I think it's insane. He, she liked too many pictures of his friends and stuff. You, oh, <laughs> and then he was like, "I'm gonna destroy a museum." <laughs> I just don't know how he, why the fuck he went to, to the break, museum. You, yeah, he got other stuff. Like, ah, oh, man, I'm so pissed. I'm just gonna I, go destroy a museum. I keep trying to think about it. Like, how far is the museum from his house? Is did it he close? Did he, did he drive? Did he drive? Did he, 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 he pull up? <laughs> Where did he get the chair from outside? Yeah, why would they just have a chair Church outside? outside that's, such a, that's like a movie thing. They're just like crap pro- chair. <laughs> Sounds like he's drunk, but they didn't mention. It feels like they mentioned if he was drunk. Mm. Is it a mental break? What the hell is happening? He's like, and then they're like, "Why do you do this?" He's like, "Ah, my girl, my girl, mad at my girl." Do you guys know her? 
<laughs> she can be much. One of the cops was like, I get it, bro. I get I get it. Sit right here. Sit right here. We about to call these people. What if one of the cops dated her and that's why he got off? He was like, I know the bitch. <laughs> I already know what you're going through, man. <laughs> I've destroyed plenty of art exhibits yeah. over this woman. You just don't know. That many is a stylish artist. It's actually impressive. <laughs> <laughs> this was good. Five million? Nice. My um, highest I got to is two fifty on the art walk. <laughs> Just run down to like a, an art festival. Why are you destroying doing this? locals? I'm out of my girl. You don't know my girl. <laughs> that's a long that's history of these. Logical. <laughs> that's, that's a real. You don't know her, bro. <laughs> you don't know my girl. You don't know what happened. And you can answer anybody like that, and people will just shut the fuck up. They're just getting... anything can happen in life. You're like, why would you do this, sir? You're like, you don't know my girl. Everybody's like, okay, right. we don't. <laughs> what? Are you okay? <laughs> What the hell? Happy to see you, officer. If you could just flip it on niggas real quick. Happy <laughs> to see you, officer. They're like, what? <laughs> we better arrest you. No, you don't know my girl. Don't arrest me. <laughs> There's a little bit of logic in it, like, because he could have, like, broke into a random house and destroyed shit. But, like, no. He was like, this place is empty. I could get in here and destroy some stuff, take I'm out just, my anger. There's places you could go to to destroy things. You could pay $50 and go in there with a, a, a sledgehammer and yeah. just break shit. What if he was on some killmonger <laughs> shit? What if he was like, yo, this specific thing is an artifact they stole from these people, so I'm destroying these things. Mm. I'm destroying these <laughs> artifacts that they stole. Maybe she must have stole that. She must he blamed this girl. He panicked. He was a real protester. He's a fucking activist who just panicked and blamed this girl. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you do it? My, my girl! <laughs> He's Shit. Like, oh, I was supposed to say global warming. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I guess I just get to be high and ask fitness questions. We had a... Uh, the, on the last show, we had an article about a 32-year-old who died running the New York Marathon. He ran the whole entire thing. I heard about and that. And then his like, heart gave out. Uh, uh, how, how like long would I, if I have not been exercising for a while, like, could, you know, sometimes you're exercising and then you're like, am I going to die? Like, how often are you actually going to die? To die. <laughs> <laughs> He had to How wonder, often like, are you going to die? You know when you feel like you're going to die? How often are you actually He definitely had some underlying issues. He had some issues he didn't know about. Mm, that's that, what's going on. And that goes into what's important about. That nigga did the New York Marathon. But people, a, lot of people don't, a lot of men don't go to. 32. 32 year old men, a lot of men don't go to the doctor. I know. That's important. Like blood work, checkups, you know, that stuff is important. You know, talking about like men's. Men's health, you know, this month and being in June, like I, I solely believe that, and I, I want all men to stop going to the doctor. We wait until like the last minute to find out something. Like you can find out a lot of people. If you used to go to the doctor to get blood work done, you see, well, I'm not losing weight. You see, sometimes like certain men testosterone is low. Certain certain men, you might be, you might have things going on in your body that you don't know. You can't just wake up and look like, oh, okay, I'm fine. Now nah, you might, you need to get a check. And I can, I would tell any man, just like. Go to the doctor, you know, get a yearly checkup, just like find out what's going on on the inside. Blood work and stuff like that, that's something that you have to specifically request, right? That's not just part of a yearly checkup, though, is now it? You just, now you go to let them know you want to get a full panel mm -hmm. blood work, just find out everything that's going on. And then you'll see, like, longevity in your life. It's like you, you can't fix what you don't know. Right. And then, then you end up falling, you know. How long you want to mm -hmm. live? Me? Yeah, did it, we already asked this question. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. This is the question I want to ask you guys. How long do you <clears throat> actually want to live? What age are you like, yo, that's the age that I want to, I think that's, I've accomplished everything I want to. I can check out. Uh, now, let's, let's, let's try not to think, be like, technology in the future is going to let me live to 192. Mm -hmm. Maybe it does. But I'm saying right now in this moment, based off technology we have, where do you, how long do you want to live? This is a, a decent question. I'm, I'm interested to hear what you think as a person who takes fitness very seriously. Like, do you, how long in your life do you think you're going to? No, not going to. I said, how long do you want to? So I have a grandfather that's 94 right now. Um, and he's still good. What do you mean good? He looks not 94 and he still does things. So What is he doing? <laughs> Cutting grass. He He's still like... It's active, stuff he's yeah. Active. He active. Yeah. And he's just, 
Because <laughs> you have happen. a grandma who's 94. Yeah, I have a grandma who's 94. Not, not act. He's not. He's not <laughs> in act. No, he's not. He's not just. He's not just sitting around. Like he still. He still does things. Um, I'm never going to stop exercising. Um, yeah. At 94. I'm not. I'm never ever. What like, you trying to get to at 94? <laughs> I'm asking. What's your fitness goal? You think? I'm what, gonna be what, nigga, nigga, I'm gonna be pick it up. <laughs> I'm gonna figure it out. I'm gonna figure it out, man. Like, uh, you know, health is such a state of mind too. So you already just having that mental like state of just being like, I'm gonna be active. I'm not. I'm whatever. I feel like that's a lot. What of happened? And for him to already think about 94, he's gonna make it. Yeah, for I sure. Fuck with it. Hey, you gonna make it? I'm proud of you. I'm not. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Let you know right now. I, I said something earlier. I had a post and I said like fitness. It's my life. It's like it fuses everything in my life. Where mm-hmm. I, if I don't work out, I can't do things, and that's a mental aspect because people. Hell yeah, it is. People, people. I, I'm a chill. I don't want to. And chilling turns into weeks, months, years, mm-hmm. and it's something that I utilize. Like the same way you put gas in the car, the same way that you have to, you know, charge something. You have to. That's what fitness is for me, and it's become so important to me. At first, it was like you know, you think of the aesthetic of it. You know, I want to look good, and then when you get to the goal to look good. It's like, okay, what else you do? Like, I was a bodybuilder. I know what perfect looks like. Then it's like, now I'm an endurance athlete. I swim, cycle, box, run, you know, doing triathlons now. So it's like, I want to always get to the next point of, like, what I can do to continue to better myself body-wise, you know, health-wise. Because if I take care of it long enough, it's going to go forever. Not forever, forever, but it's going to go forever. I'm going to get to 94. See, I think that way about mm-hmm. creating things of like, I want to make things that can live forever. You can. You can make yourself. No, I don't care about that as much. Okay. Not that I don't <laughs> like that. I don't care create, at all. Who's going to create it? Huh? Not that I don't care at all. I fuck with it. I fuck with health and all that stuff. That stuff is cool. Uh, I'm also like, the thought of 94 and the thought of me living to 94, me knowing my grandma right now at 94, and I've known some people who have lived a very long time who I was like, oh shit, you still, you still here. You still here. You still quick with it. But... 94, I don't think, I don't think I'm going to get to 94 and still be boom, 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 boom. And if I'm not, it slows down. It slows if down. I'm not, I need y'all to just go ahead and take me out. Take me out to the back. <laughs> do, do me one. Do me, do me, one. Get me out of Send here. me away. <laughs> you think you're going to make, you're like, well, at least this is here. <laughs> That'll stay with you. And I'm just going to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go. See, you guys I have this stuff. I think. I think my problem with not, being able to do that I just, Well I just think it's not It's just the way our minds work differently Because I think you also probably feel like You're like living your purpose As you're as your being active I have a friend who's like an athlete Who travels around the world And you can tell just every day he wakes up And he's like I'm going to do I'm going to slack line I'm going to jump on a bike I'm going to go do You know it's just like what you live for And sometimes when I'm in the gym I'm like I'm, This is a waste of time Because you don't know what, what you're doing you know, This you is know, what, what I'm built for Right This isn't me But I don't want But but I'll be on a hike Or I'll like I'll like hike for days Or like Be on a You know And in, in that sense I'm like yeah This is I'm human This is good But when I'm like In a gym Like Your nature man I'm Maybe certain, you gotta find Workouts I'm outside thing, I'm like a, Working on a certain thing It's not as Well I could see it I could see getting into it But it's, it's just not for my brain. It's that Hugh Jackman, uh, when he was doing Wolverine, each time he would have his trainer come in and do completely different workouts outdoors. That like he would cool. do all kind of axe work and stuff that, cause he just was like, I, for his brain, it just didn't work in the gym. It wasn't his place of comfort. So he was like, we have to find ways that I can be outside and yeah. do what I, I need to get done. So the gym gets boring. Yeah. Like, I was a, you know, I, I, I lift the weights. I lift weights for a long time. I was a bodybuilder. It gets boring because you're going to the gym every day, and it's what you're creating. Your, what are you doing? So it's like now it's cycling. Cycling has been the, one of the best sports I've ever done. And I jumped. And I said I got on a bike. Like I got on a bike. I was on a couple of men's fitness in 2020 in April. In June I did my first crit race, which is a I, the following year the first crit race on a bike, which is hard as hell. And What's like, what do you do in that? You're, you're racing on bikes, but it's like think of a Formula One race, but on bikes. It's oh, wow. we we're doing like it's like it could be a figure eight. We're doing 26, 27 miles an hour, sprinting at 42 miles an hour on a bike. Holy you know fuck. what I'm saying? I, my, my top speed has been like 56 miles an hour on a bike. You know, so it's like you're doing different things. Now I'm swimming. Swimming is the hardest thing to me 
But once I, I'm a, I'm a learn, I'm a figure it out, learn it, and I'm gonna become good at that. And then doing these Ironmans, like these Ironmans where you, you have to swim two miles, you have to ride a bike 110 miles, you have to run a marathon for 26 miles in, a, in about six hours. You know, that's, that's like, there's a certain mental toughness you gotta have. And I think that's what, when it comes to fitness and decisions and choices, it's the, men, it's the mentality, it's the mental toughness. And that's what I've always had. Like my mentality has been very, like I'm gonna do it. If I say I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, no matter what it is. And fitness is one of those things that help you define how strong you really are. Because you don't, you don't wanna do that shit. When I'm climbing the mountains on a bike and you got these other guys that weigh 150 pounds, I'm 225. That shit suck. I want to get off the bike and walk up the hill. But you, I can't quit. You know what I'm saying? And like but you, you said, could. I could, but I, <laughs> why would I? Why would I? You know, then I got to live with myself. Oh, but like, you. You, know, you know what it reminds you of? It's like you get punched in the face in the street and then you didn't do nothing back. Yeah. You got to go sure. home and be like, I'm a bitch. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's like if I don't, if I don't push myself to the limit every single day, you know, if I'm even if it's not just in the gym, I push myself to the limit, men, limit mentally to be able to get work done, be creative, like you're talking about. Like seeing you go from what you were doing over these years to be able to create an album and actually be a good album, and it's actually like out here and it's doing well. Everybody can't do that, so you, you take that creative mindset and you, and you take that 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 mental aspect of like having a strong mind, having a strong heart, and being able to go and do it. You could take that and put it in every part of your life. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? A battery makes that one battery makes a car go. And there's so many different things, transmission, uh, car rate, all these different things to make one car go. That's that mental strength of a car coming from the battery. It's the same thing to me. That's how I look at that's how I look at life and look at everything I do. Do you think that, that and you think that can be <clears throat> developed in the gym? So you're not necessarily saying you're like in a state of flow as you're doing all these things. You're just like, I just have to fucking push through. I have to. I have to. And that's just I have to. And sometimes yeah. you want to stop or not go as hard, but it's like you I used to, I used to, people had to say all these things about, you know, you shouldn't quit. You should keep going. I'd be like, man, shut up. I just finished lifting this shit. I ain't doing it. And as I started to evolve and understand how the mental and the physical really connect to my emotional, yeah, it was like, I really started to be like, nah, don't quit on yourself. Like, don't quit on yourself. Because mm-hmm. if I quit on myself in here, nine times out of 10, I'm going to do something outside of my life. I'm going to quit on that shit too. And it becomes a ripple effect. You know, so yeah. you got to start somewhere. You know? That makes sense yeah. for you, though. I mean, like for for a lot of people, uh, for you, you've seen success in fitness as well, mm-hmm. which would obviously make it very easy in your psyche to be like, why would you not keep going in this direction if you found success and it's got you to all these different avenues through this one through this one vehicle, and that is fitness. So I, I, I can see how for you it can make perfect sense. I know for the uh, the guy that's a writer that might not use fitness at all. I'm not saying he doesn't. Just saying the guy that's like might not use fitness at all. It's it, I can see how it can be tough for him to be like, well, I've written things and it's got that's been my form of success. I've gotten here mm-hmm. in which my life from writing, writing, writing. Fitness has never been involved in that. I'm just saying, how do you encourage that nigga to be like, hey, how are you? You know what I'm saying? Like, so th- that's a that's not a hard thing to do. So because fitness is, you have to, it, it's you. It's not something that you're creating or writing to give someone else. It's you. It's your, it's your body. It's your everyday that you have to walk around in that vehicle every day of yourself. And you take a person who's, these people who's like unhappy and, 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 and people who are sad and people who, they got men that have hella money. Mm-hmm. Like, like that are doing are super successful and you ask them to get in front of a mirror and say are you happy with yourself? Take away everything. Take away every accolade. Take away every dime, every cent. Are you happy with what you see in the mirror? And when you can, when you really change your body and change your life like that, it changes everything around you. Think of we, we've 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 had people who change their life through with their body, and literally everything has changed. I've I've saved people from heartbreaks, relationships, jobs, families came back together because I started to help them change. The one thing that you got to use every single day. Mm-hmm. If and and if people who don't do it honestly, it's because they don't. It's a choice you don't want to, but it's something you use. You use your body every single day, so no, why not get the best that you can? It ain't got to be the most perfect body, but something that makes you makes you feel happy and accomplished, and, and not comparing yourself to the next person, comparing yourself to you. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And that's why I encourage people to exercise, do something active. You know what I'm saying? You can have the things that you do, but take care of that one thing that you have to use every day. Yeah. If, if we got people that don't use their body every day, they ghosts or like aliens or some shit, whatever, cool. But um, and it helps you do that other thing that you do, like whatever yeah. it is. It, if I, I've started integrating activity in 
with my work schedule a lot more like very consciously and that makes you so much better at your at what you're doing mm -hmm. you know what i mean it makes you better at your work mm -hmm. when, i think working out in general just for most people if you if you do it if nothing else during it you may not like it but right after you feel like I'm so happy I fucking did that. I'm so happy I did that. You feel better about yourself for sure. As much as you say you don't work out, you play basketball. Yeah. You hoop. I know when you don't I get a hoop, chance. You, you don't hoop as you used to, but you're be working. So. I wasn't when I got into fitness, I wasn't like I was a dope boy before that. I was selling, I was in the street. I wasn't really like this athlete. People think that's super athlete that grew up doing it. Hell no. It's something that I wanted to do because I wasn't happy with myself. And I found sacrifice in it. I found consistency in it. I found you know, uh, uh, just things, I found it making me feel better, you know what I'm saying? And I just transferred that stuff into life and came to Hollywood, and I was like, oh, this is easy. Oh, this is easy, baby. I'm with you, though. You know? So. I get it. Hell yeah. We about to get this work, though. Not yet tomorrow morning. Yeah. Tomorrow morning works for me, too. Wait, so what? You said 94. What age did you say you were? I ain't really say 94. To? I just say up there somewhere. I'm not picking a date. But 94. You, you know, somewhere in the 90s. Okay. You're but in the 90s. I'm a, maybe, I don't, maybe 100. I don't know. I'm not saying that. God, I'm not. I'm not going. I'm Maybe a hundred. I like this idea that um, I'm gonna like be a healthy older person. I I feel I feel like I could trend in that direction. Okay. Well, I mean start. I mean starting with this intermittent fasting. There you go. <laughs> what uh, what age is that? <laughs> um. Oh, I I would like to go like be living in my 80s and 90s. I think my brain might go first. I might get like flighty and like maybe Alzheimer's y. And as, <laughs> as long as I'm still having fun, then like <laughs> You're good. I, I'm happy with that. Cause sometimes like old people will be crazy, but like they'll be having a good time. <laughs> and I'm like, at least you're having a good time. You don't make a lot of sense. But, you're <laughs> but you seem time. like you're happy. But if I'm like, ah, no one understands what I'm trying to say, and I'm all like mad because yeah, my mind's going, yeah. then maybe kill me. <laughs> <laughs> But I'd say eighties or I I I don't know. Like then with technology and maybe maybe this I week think really just changes smooth. me around. I'm an eighties guy. I get it. I'm an eighties guy. I got nineties. I'm just like nineties. What are we pushing for? I'm also because, <laughs> you, it's like why are you trying to be so long? <laughs> because I, why are you taking up people's space and shit? <laughs> I think I could also really well age into like the hundred year old man. Mm. I think. Oh, I, you think you could do that? Yeah, if my you brain stays believe? sharp enough, or maybe if it doesn't, I'll be like, I remember before. Wait, so you <laughs> any guys, of the alien? I mean, any <laughs> any of the robots? I like, think, I think you put a success them. ratio or a success rate on um, being in your nineties and having everything else way too high. Both of you are like, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get to ninety four and everything's gonna be perfect. Well, he's at well, his yeah, no, he's like, well, yeah, that's good. different. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, so yeah. why do you think <laughs> I don't know I mean I, I think that when I look at my family problems I think most of them are actually from not staying like healthy our lifestyle choices yeah, yeah. so if I'm, I'm with looking that. at like the people like people don't like get cancer which sucks for a lot of families you know but yeah. people you know people die of smoking or like they didn't take care of themselves yeah or, they have chronic pain and that feels like not taking care of themselves. And so if I can start this week and then I'll go this straight to the you, I'm going to say shit, man. This is where, this where it starts. This yeah, week. I'm just going for healthy. <laughs> I want to go for like healthy 80s and then like, yeah, they just was like, yeah, he ain't wake up. <laughs> he just, he, he, he just, went to sleep watching some shit. It was funny. You don't think it'd be fun to have one up. unhealthy part of your life where you like get fat for a while? Mm -mm. <laughs> and like just all of a sudden you're like, and I was fat for a second. I used to be fat for a second. Oh, okay, he already, so you already did that had shit. that. I already did that. You already had that. that okay, happened. cool. Mm -mm. Not going back. That's you, Alana? That made you commit suicide. Have I been fat? No, the <laughs> age. Oh. Um... <laughs> I think it all depends on like my state of mind and how my body feels. Oh, everybody wanna give these fucking long when <laughs> just give me an age, give everybody. Me well, I can't give you an age. If I'm crumbling at sixty five, you could take me out. Why would you be oh. crumbling at sixty five? I don't know, but if I'm like ninety five and I'm still like <coughs> That's a bit, with it. Yeah, thirty years. I mean, yeah, thirty years is a long time. It is. But uh, I mean I would like to see Zane grow old and have kids and all that and be around for that. 
So, yeah. Oh yeah, you get to yeah. you get to tell all your family what to do too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. can't That's wait always to cool. continue to bother. But like, okay, around. if your kids just have to take care of you, if your kids are like, yeah, I don't want that. Gotta out. take care of you. Do y'all want to put that burden on no, your kids? I don't like, I take a robot. Take me out. Yeah, about a time oh, no. we're we, robot. Yeah, we'll just be playing video games. I don't want to do that. If I'm just not living my life anymore, I can't live life. I don't want to just sit in bed all day. Like I don't want that. Oh, I yeah, I can't do that. Sounds yeah, if I can. What if you can still eat? What if you can taste everything, oh. but you couldn't talk? But you can still eat properly. I don't want to be a remember when. You don't even oh, like yeah. eating that much. I you don't, don't care what? enough about eating. I love food. I love to food. To a certain extent. <laughs> I love food. Food keeps me alive. That's what I'm saying. Sure. See, I know what you I would say life for food. Everybody be like, you a foodie? I'm like, nope. Yeah. Going to restaurants and stuff like that. You're not a foodie? Mm-mm. You just hate. You don't like to eat. He eat I like the same to, thing. Yeah, I eat the same thing all the time. I, See, I like think that. that's I a gift for people who yeah. like to stay in shape because yeah. you're it's, like, yeah. I don't so care about it's it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It's so, I, I don't, It tastes the same to me. Oh, see, <laughs> that's why everything tastes I mean, like chicken and rice. <laughs> I know, crazy. Damn, you're gonna taste one thing in like your fifties. Your taste will actually every once in a while. I think every seven years, your taste buds technically change. New York chopped cheese. Change so your life. Maybe, then you're just gonna. It then will be it. You'll get. You'll be like, actually, this is worth it. So that's what I'm eating on Sunday. Mm. New York chop cheese. You should for real. I'm having on Sunday. New York It's gonna cheese. hit. Yeah, yeah it's, it's gonna hit. Be like shit. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> you cheat for real on cheat days? What? Like you cheat for real? I'm, I'm, I'm a. I'm a I, I'll eat. Junk. I will go to the. I will go to the store in the middle of the night to get chips, M and M's, and a diet coke. And a oh, diet you pop. coke. Wow. It's still mm. diet. It's just because it's, <laughs> it's a mental. It's, it's a stupid thing. But it's like, yeah, yeah. like I'm not a. I'm, I'm, I never had that. Go, <laughs> yeah, I, I could get you one. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy. Like, <laughs> I know Coke. You know, <laughs> um, but nah, man, I, I don't. You know, I, I, unless like, like I said, I'm getting ready for something. Then it's very reg- regiment. Outside of that, I'm a. I'm a. You know, I know. You know. I know. I know. I live mm. with you, boy. Yeah, you. Okay, so question. My last question. What would be your last meal? Like, you should, this is the meal. Oh, okay. This death stuff is really fucking with me right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want me to die. bring this death <laughs> and No, if they were like, oh, we're going to cut off food and all food's going to taste like Poop. the same. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, this is my last time to really taste a meal. Oh, so on, it's, on, it's, on, on this plate, it's going to have a hot sausage pool boy from Danny and Clyde's in New Orleans. Okay. Mm. I'm going to have. Uh, stew chicken. Mm. Okay. A, pro, a piece of praline candy. We call it pecan candy and a, and a pecan pie. Pecan pie. Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. That's a that's like a, a, like a full meal. Again? New Orleans. Yeah, of course. It's a very <laughs> New Orleans meal. <laughs> a like oh, a yeah. full meal. What's yours? My last meal? Yeah. Oh my gosh. My last is a full meal. Yeah, you got. I'll you know. probably make some some You're some nigga it? food. Yeah, some, <laughs> some macaroni and cheese, mm-hmm. some uh, some really good, well done wings, jumbo flats. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> I guess some greens, some cornbread. Uh, you gonna eat your cornbread? Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I really like it. Enjoy some spaghetti because niggas somehow make spaghetti. We swear it's ours. <laughs> Yesterday I was telling my boy that it's making all this food. He was like, uh, I was like, yeah, make some nigga food. And I was like, put some spaghetti in there. And I was like, how do we really just try to take over spaghetti? Just <laughs> like <eating> Italian food. <laughs> but uh, spaghetti and probably, I'm trying to think what else. Do I want dessert? I'm not a dessert person really. That's cool. You're not going to get the last dessert. I don't care about this early thing. Mm, shit. I guess a pound cake. Give me pound cake with a, a scoop of ice cream, vanilla ice cream. I'm basic. God, that really shit warm though, it. it's gonna go crazy. It's hard because of like this last thing I'm gonna taste. Like mm-hmm. I really love like citrusy tastes. Mm. So like, but like, I guess I like meat, but I think I like like that taste more than that. So then I think you'd put fish with it, and then I'm thinking sushi. So if I can like get the best sushi possible. Really? And then I also want like macaroni and cheese and like smashed potato. Well, maybe some sort of potatoes and I want a fried chicken sandwich. A fried chicken sandwich. You gonna get sushi with a fried chicken sandwich? Like, yeah, I'll take some time. I want like an appetizer <laughs> plate of a bunch of shit. Those are the things I think I want. You might as well end it off since you asked the question. So definitely mac and cheese and yams and greens and cornbread. But I feel like that's one side. Like I recently saw on Twitter they cooked um, a thing of cornbread and they put all of that inside of the cornbread as like a side. So I want that with mm. some chicken, shredded chicken nachos 
It's like a corn dog, but like straight like chicken a, nachos. I love not. I've been on a you nachos. You do a nacho tear here. Yeah. I have and some French fries. See how important is it if you dating somebody for them to eat right? If you want to get in shape. Hold up, what? Because my girl be That's eating. a good Don't question. Don't start this on this my, podcast. I said, how important is it if you want to get in shape for you to be dating somebody else that also wants to eat right? Because my girl wants to eat everything. And she will order everything. I'm like, you know, I don't, I can't be eating this shit. But also, why would you order that? Because I look good. Let my girlfriend so. drinks a milkshake every single night. It's insane. Mm, that's and crazy. So now you drink a milkshake. <laughs> I, I drink a sip of a milkshake and like, hey, hey, and that's why you love this fast. So say, this is why I have to intermittent fast. <laughs> <laughs> but Claudia's active. Claudia does yoga and all this Claudia, stuff. Right? Claudia's <laughs> active, but she looks me at more. No, she will. She's active and she's athletic. So See, she I feel like, as long as you're active, hype. you can eat anything. Right, but, Corey? That's yeah, what I took away from this podcast. Not but. <laughs> right now she's not I just as put active. I, I she's just, just somebody who can eat anything. But how active are you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because sometimes people overeat and they just act not relative. I'm getting to the mm. if. Okay. <laughs> so you gotta watch it because it's gonna catch it. It's gonna catch your boy okay. to catch it. But you know, it's a it, it it's it's tricky. I, I don't if I'm date if I'm if I'm with somebody that doesn't really eat a lot or they like to eat, you could do your thing. I'm gonna ask for a piece. Cause ain't nothing wrong with a piece. Yeah. You know, give me a, give me give me five fries or six. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just need the taste. Mm-hmm. That's all. That's what I do. That's how I feel too. I'll eat all. I'll definitely just eat. We're doing it right. If we, go, if, we go out to, if we go out to eat, let me just I need you know I just need to taste that. That's it. But outside of that, I'm like that too. Just give me a taste of that. <laughs> well, so I also eat the fries. other person's fries. <laughs> just give, just give me a couple. Ooh, Even ooh. the the people hate people. Are like, you? Are you? That? Okay. Are you? I don't because I am that guy. You know. You know it's really, <laughs> tell us about the taste. It's about a taste. You know, it's like you get a pack of M&M's, get six, and just throw the rest, throw the rest away, but you got to throw it away. Mm. That's wasteful. That's, I understand. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. I understand. I wish I could help you. <laughs> Listen, I remember I, had a, I, I was competing one year, and I had I was craving something bad. I went to Raising Cane's. Got oh, a whole, Raising Cane's so good. Literally. I got, <laughs> look, look, you can't mention anything. <laughs> I, got, I got the whole, I ordered the Cane's and I started, I, I ate a piece of bread, mm-hmm. some fried, and literally had a piece of a, a, a chicken finger. And I chew it, I chewed it up till I felt like I was about to uh, swallow so, it. And you spit it I out? I spit it out and threw the rest out the window. That is self-control. That is, <laughs> I think it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Was anyone sitting next to you? Wait, did you do that with the whole you meal? You did that with the whole meal? Did you do it bite for bite? Did you do it bite for bite? The whole meal you did that? I threw it away, yeah. Wow. Because I've always thought yeah, about because, doing that. Because if I, would have, if I would have ate it, I know I'd have to pay for it. I would have to literally like you paid for it. I know. <laughs> I would have to do an extra amount of work just to like. That was when I was strict, strict, strict. Like I'm with you. Like, I'm gonna start eating. See, my thing in the like moment that, is like no. I'll do the work. <laughs> I don't care. I'm gonna do it at restaurants in oh. front of people. Can I get an extra, I get an extra plate? What's that one for? For spinning. This is my. This is my. I can't eat this shit plate. This my, yeah, I do. That should take off. Like, like wine tasting, just like meal tasting. You eat it and you're like, that's pretty good. Spit it out. <laughs> You should spit it out. Ew. Oh, man. I'm, I think it's a thought. <laughs> man, I'm telling you, it'd be crazy sometimes. When I do eat, I go I go in. I can eat pizza. I, I go get Popeye's, McDonald's, and Taco Bell at the same time. And it'd be like nothing. Yeah. Yeah, because you spit it all out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. uh, Did we do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's the episode of Wine and Week. Thank you so much, Corey. Thank for you real. for having Thank me. Thank you, Corey. Man. Come back anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zip it up. Zip it up. Hi, y'all.